It is July 10th and Ukraine continues their broad counteroffensive on Russian positions all across the front line. In Zaporozhye, Ukraine has managed to advance several kilometers and appears to be on the cusp of launching a large assault to attempt, to ca attempt the capture of Robotny. In the Donbass, Russian forces have shown that without the presence of Wagner, the defensive lines around Bakhmut are significantly weaker, which has presented an opportunity for Ukraine to reduce the Russian salience both to the north and south of town. We will talk more on the prospects of a second battle of Bakhmut. Further to the north, the Russian army continues to gain ground in the Kremena forests in a battle that seems every bit as attritional as the ones taking place in Zaporizhia. All of this in today's Frontline Report. On the steps of Zaporizhia, Ukraine has revamped their efforts and has taken control over the Nature Preserve north of the frontline town of Robotny, an area where success is paramount for the Ukrainian army to make a serious advance on the Russian-occupied city of Melitopol. But before we jump into the details, I would like to give just a quick reminder and to please consider hitting both that like and subscribe button, actions that are totally free for you to do but are a big help for me to grow the channel. Also consider hitting the bell icon so you do not miss the next update. And like many channels reporting on the Russo-Ukrainian war, some of these videos are targeted with little or no ads. So if you'd like to help keep the channel running, could please consider donating through the super chat feature and the YouTube comment section. Ukraine has gained ground in Zaporizhia, but at the cost of both military military equipment and manpower. However, the success has been that has been had has placed the Ukrainian army in a good position to potentially launch an assault and capture the frontline town of Robotny. If Ukraine is successful here, it would be the most significant gain so far for the Ukrainians in the summer fighting season. The town is located just behind a series of Russian frontline positions located on the high ground. So if Ukraine can successfully break through these lines, it would give them a local geographic advantage up to the next tier of Russian defensive positions. We do have some video footage from the front in this area, but keep in mind this video does come from Russian sources, so it does not show the so it does show the destruction of Ukrainian vehicles and not Russian vehicles. This is probably only part of the picture as Ukraine is taking ground, which means they are likely inflicting losses on Russians as well. This should serve as a reminder of the serious cost of launching offensive operations to begin with. The density of minefields means that in order for heavy equipment to advance, they are often caught out in the open, giving opportunities to enemy anti-tank teams and drone operators to call in precision strikes on any unlucky vehicles. Next, we will move to the area of Avdivka, where the Russian army has launched a new attack in the direction of Severne. This does serve to remind us of the precarious position of the city. It appears that Ru the Russian army has recaptured previously lost positions in the fields south of town. Avdivka remains a hot spot of fighting as the Russians still have the town in a semi-encirclement. This is a situation that could easily get far worse for the Ukrainians if Ru Russia is able to free up reserves in order to launch a real offensive in the area. Fortunately for the Ukrainian army, this does not appear to be an immediate possibility as the majority of Russian reserves are being kept in other sectors of the front to deal with Ukraine's repeated breakthrough attempts. Out of the three areas in and around Avdivka that the Russians attempted to advance, only one of them has been successful in recent weeks, meaning Ukraine is devoting combat power to fend off these Russian assaults. In the areas around Bakhmut, the situation has somewhat deteriorated for the Russians. Ukraine continues to pin down Russian forces in the area of Kleshivka, while a Ukrainian assault unit has successfully entered into the town of Berkivka. The situation around Berkivka is now very dire for the Russians. If the Ukrainians successfully capture the town, it will result in a retreat for the Russian units in advanced positions along the M03 highway. These units will likely retreat due to the possibility of encirclement if they remain put, since one of the main supply roads for the salient actually lies within the town. Further to the north of Solodar, Ukrainian units have managed to break through Russian frontline positions and have captured positions in the field to the west of Mykolaivka. This places a lot of stress on Russian lines outside of Solodar, opening up the possibility for Ukraine to launch an assault on the city that was rapidly captured by Wagner mercenary forces in early January. 
Solodar remains a vitally important town because of the underground network of tunnels and salt mines that still exist from the Soviet era. It is thought that there are large, still large caches of weapons and ammo left over in the mines, ones that the Russians have almost certainly grown with their own frontline supplies. Keeping weapons and ammo in the mines is still a smart move by both sides because they are well protected from artillery and missile strikes and can be distributed across the front from this central location. Further to the north, it is reported that the Russian army has managed to make advances south of Belogorovka in the area of the small settlement of Sperne, which is the site of a large gas compressor, compressor station. While the gas station it used to move gas from Russia through Ukraine to Europe, it has been rendered inoperable since the battle for Severodonetsk last summer that resulted in a defeat and withdrawal for the Ukrainian army. The town still sits on the approaches to the Ukrainian frontline logistical hub of Seversk and still remains a vitally important sector of the front for both sides. The Russian army likely launched these attacks to put pressure on the flanks of Ukrainian troops assaulting towards Solodar and Bakhmut. A little bit of a side note here, this is a large area that I have marked on the map, but some of this area reportedly was already under control of the Russian army, so the advances are a lot smaller than what we have here marked on the map. This is just a, a general map update that kind of tells us where the front lines really are. Further to the north, the Russian army has made further advances into the Kremena forests. This is the site of a recent ambush of Ukrainian troops attempting to evacuate a uh, wounded comrade, a video that has been making its rounds on the internet and through some international news outlets. While Ukraine continues to make counterattacks in the area, it appears like the Russians have Ukraine on the back foot here, at least for the time being. As stated in my previous update, this is a very large and dense forested area, so the prospect of Russia capturing vast swaths of the forest in a haste manner are still very slim. But losing a foothold in the forest could prove disastrous for the Ukrainian offensive operations that are going on further to the south. In summary, the nearly 1,000 kilometer front line in western Ukraine is very much in flux. The front line positions are changing daily, so operations are becoming far less predictable than they were during the winter campaign. Regular updates on the Ukrainian offensive will continue through July. That is all for me today. Once again, thank you for joining, and until next time.